Hello everybody and welcome back to another match reaction on the channel. I do apologise for not doing one on the Shrewsbury game on Saturday. If you want the honest answer as to why I went out on the sesh after the game, made my first Sunday league appearance in 13 years and then went out on the sesh again. So that is the reason why there wasn't a reaction to the game. And to be perfectly honest with you, it wouldn't have been a very good video. A boring nil-nil draw, very poor performance. Fantastic display by Harry Eisted though in between the sticks. If it wasn't for him, we probably would have lost that. We were still unbeaten under Michael Appleton and four games unbeaten in the league. And last night, that run got extended to five games as it finished at the Valley. Charlton Athletic 4, Exeter City 1. Yeah, I don't think that was in the script. I don't think many people really expected that, but... Really good night. A really, really good night last night. Unfortunately, I didn't attend the game in person. Unfortunately, other commitments prevented me from going to the game. But I did watch it from home and was very impressed. A very, very good night. Very good performance. A bit of a demolition job, really, after what was a fairly shaky first half. And obviously... We did turn the game on its head in the second half. The sending off obviously massively helped, which we do need to discuss because that was highly controversial. But regardless, a very good night. And once again, coming back from behind at the Valley, we never ever seemed to do that. We made four changes to the side that drew with Shrewsbury on Saturday. Of course, Harry Ice did, did miss this game due to injury. Reportedly, he has suffered a knee injury and will be out for six weeks, which is disappointing considering his performance on Saturday. He played really well, by far his best Charlton performance. Ashley Maynard Brewer comes back into the fold. Of course, I've been screaming for Maynard Brewer to come back into the side, really, and it is a bit of a shame that he has come into the side through really an enforced change through injury. It wasn't by choice that he was put into the starting eleven, but nevertheless, I wasn't complaining with him being back in between the sticks. A back four of Tenai Watson, Michael Hector, Lloyd Jones, and Terrell Thomas, an unchanged back four. The formation was, of course, a 4-2-3-1. I guess you could say the preferred Michael Appleton formation. He's played that a lot over the years, but it was a 4-2-3-1 with George Dobson and Louis Watson as the holding midfielders. Of course, Watson coming in for the injured Terry Taylor, who I do feel very sorry for. He's had a very difficult start to his Charlton career with the amount of injuries that he sustained already. Slobodan Tedic got a deserved start on the right-hand side. Corey Blackett-Taylor playing on the left. Alfie May as the 10 and Chuck Sanike leading the line up front. So going into the game, I did think it was a very attack-heavy lineup. You know, Tedic and Anike getting a start, and I think a deserved start. They've both played really well. Coming off the bench made a solid impact in all the games they have played in. Alfie May playing as the 10. I was quite interested to see how he would do starting in that position, because he has... Uh, as the games have gone on, when Chucks and Tedich have come on, May has been moved as, into the 10 position, and I've seen him have a lot more of an impactful role in that position, a lot more energetic and having a lot more of the ball and getting more involved in the game, and I was looking forward to seeing how he would fare there. Louis Watson, I didn't think he had the best of games on Saturday, to be honest with you, but that being said, I felt that he was probably the ideal replacement to replace the injured Taylor. Fraser, obviously, back on the bench. I didn't think he was ready to start games just yet. The defence I was worried about, because defensively we were very poor on Saturday, and the fact that it was unchanged had me a little bit concerned. But overall, I did think it was a decent attacking side and I was looking forward to seeing how this team would fare. As for Exeter, had a pretty bright start to the season, uh, much the same as last season. Hit a bit of inconsistency recently. They were going into this game two defeats in a row without scoring a goal. And of course, the game before that, they got absolutely trashed by Reading 9-0 in, uh, in the EFL Trophy. But yeah, going into this game with a bit of inconsistency, but nevertheless, have had a bright start and no doubt they were going to present a tough test. Then we go into the game, going into the first half. I think fairly decent on the whole thing, to be honest with you. I, I do have to agree with Michael Appleton in that we did actually play quite well in the first half. I felt we looked uh, to impose ourselves on the game. We had a lot more of the ball. The midfield two of Dobson and Watson, I have to say this straight away, were both fantastic, both absolutely brilliant, particularly Dobson with his vision. You know, every single time... He looked to get hold of the ball. He looked to play a defence-splitting ball, a penetrating pass to get through the defence. And quite a lot of times in the first half, it really came off. And I felt that we had the perfect players uh, on the field to latch onto it. You know, we had Tedic who was making those runs in behind on the right side. And Ike, of course, showing his physical presence to shoulder off the defenders and, you know, turn and get some shots away. Blackett Taylor got a lot more involved in this game as well on Saturday. We didn't give him anywhere near enough service. And the same with Lee Burner, of course, played 
on the right hand side in that game as well. I felt that we didn't really have much reliance on the wingers, which was quite weird considering that for most of this season we've had an over reliance on the wingers. But on Saturday it was quite weird to see that we didn't give them the service. But today we sure as hell did that. You know, Blackett Taylor got a lot more of the ball, imposed himself on the game, and as I said, the midfield duo giving them those balls, Dobson with those passes, and Louis Watson was outstanding. He was absolutely fantastic yesterday, by far his best performance in a Charlton shirt so far. His technical ability, you know, weaving past defenders, his vision for passing was fantastic. Nico Okay, did find the back of the net in the 19th minute, but it was ruled out for one offside. I would like to see another angle on that. Obviously, Charlton TV didn't really display um, a good angle on it, but it was a very good ball in. I think it was Watson who played the ball in, again, shaping his way through the midfield. Played the ball... Um, through the defensive line, Tedic and Anike both breaking runs in behind. Tedic was on side by a mile, and I did think he made his time to run to perfection. But as the camera sort of swayed in, you couldn't really tell whether Anike was offside or not. I knew Tedic was on side. That's why I was screaming for um, Tedic to get hold of the ball and have a shot because he was on side. I didn't know whether Anike was offside. Anike then puts it uh, through Sinisalo's legs. It goes into the back of the net, but the lines with flags for offside. As I said, I would like to see another angle on that because I don't know whether Anike was offside or not. Uh, from the angles I have seen, I, d I don't know. He, he, look, he looks... It's a 50-50 call, really. It is close, but I knew Tedic was onside. That's why I was screaming for Tedic to get hold of the ball because if he would have shot and scored, it would have counted. So slightly annoying on that front. And what was even more annoying is four minutes later, Exeter took the lead. And it was a very frustrating goal to concede, really. They got the ball... Uh, inside their own half, I think it was Zach Jules. He played a ball from inside their own half across the floor. Defence splitting ball right the way through our defence. James Scott gets put through on goal and he has a shot. Maynard Brewer gets something onto it, but he does go in at the near post. Shocking on all counts, really. Absolutely terrible. Defensively, how we're letting a ball split our defence open like that from a ball from inside their own half is disgraceful. And there is even an argument for Maynard Brewer. He should really be saving that at his near post. A keeper should never be getting beat at his near post. I hate to put a negative on what was a very good night, you know, winning the game 4-1 and coming back from behind in that manner was fantastic. But to spin a negative on what was a very good night, defensively, again, just so, so vulnerable. Like I said, how is that defence allowing that to happen? And again, Maynard Brewer, you can put a case of him getting beat at the near post. Why is he getting beat at his near post? But defensively, we were just so vulnerable. Exeter had one of the, or two of the fastest wingers I've seen in this league so far in Dimitri Mitchell and Vincent Harper. They were causing us problems left, right and centre in that first half. Harper in particular, you know, every single time, we did it as well. You know, we kept trying to bring the ball out and from the defence and spray a long ball over the top towards Blackett Taylor. And every time, it was just so frustrating because we kept looking for that ball every time and it just wouldn't come off half the time. Whereas Exeter, they would do it. Same thing, spray the ball from the right side of their defence to Harper on the left and it would come off every time. Tenai Watson was shocking inside that first half. His positioning was terrible. He was getting skinned past Harper. Terrell Thomas as well. Both the fullbacks were just getting exposed by wingers. There was another opportunity that they had where Thomas just committed to a challenge, completely missed the ball, just kept running forwards. Our left back, nowhere to be seen. They put a ball across the face of goal and Scott gets another shot and it whizzes past the post. It was a really, really good effort and Exeter should really have taken a, another another goal from that. And if they had scored from that, it would have been a completely different game and I probably would have been talking to you about a defeat. But it was just really frustrating. Again, just defensively just being so vulnerable the minute after a Scott had that opportunity which nearly made it 2-0 Michael Hector had a stunning opportunity and a really really good strike we played a short corner um, I think Watson put the ball into the box in towards Hector and he turned his man uh, turned his shoulder and took a shot and it was a really really good effort for a centre half a fantastic strike a really good curling effort which just went wide of the post a fantastic effort from Hector and eventually we did go into the break with an equaliser we got the equaliser through Corey Blackett Taylor and I do feel really bad for Chuck Sanike because he deserved a goal last night and he did really, really well. You know, a ball come into the box. I think it was from Tedich. Uh, no, it was from Alfie May. Sorry, it was from Alfie May. He got the ball on the right-hand side, put the ball into the box. And EK, as ever, towering, wins the header, crashes the crossbar. But Blackett Taylor is there to smash it into the back of the net. 4-1 all. Oh, his third goal in four matches now for Blackett Taylor. Finally starting to see a bit of end product from him. And yeah... Probably a deserved goal, we'd have to say, going into the break. Going into the break at 1-0, I think that off the balance of play, we had the more, I don't know, whether you say the more threatening opportunities. We certainly tested Exeter's keeper more than Exeter tested our keeper. But they did have some threatening opportunities. Like I said, that's down to our defensive weakness. But attackingly, we did look strong and we did look like we could score goals. And going into the break at 1-0, I was quietly confident that we were going to turn this around and we were going to get a win. It may have something to do with the fact that in the last five games we played Exeter, we've beat them. So we're on a five-game win streak. Alfie May playing that deeper role. I may as well say it now. I haven't spoke about it already, but he was 
a deserved man of the match. He was absolutely outstanding. You know, him being given the freedom to play in that deeper role and giving May that freedom was absolutely excellent. You know, he's playing... I, I, I was really confused at first because he was all, almost playing in defence, but he was he did everything fantastically. You know, defensively, he's getting stuck in and making interceptions. He's playing the ball out wide and through the middle to an EK. He got a lot more involved in the game. I really do like him playing in that role. And I think Appleton has really struck gold with that uh, with that system change because we've seen May play that position before. You know, when... um. He's made those substitutions and he's brought an EK and Tedic on. He's, he's moved May to a deeper role and possibly out wide as well. So the fact that he started that role and he played that well and is certainly something to look at. Maynard Brewer got forced into a few saves last night as well, especially in the second half. He made a couple that I can remember in the second half. There was one in particular where they got a shot away. Maynard Brewer once again doing the typical thing where he parries it out towards one of their players. But thankfully, Tenai Watson was there to... Uh, block away that shot. Watson, I must say, Tenno Watson anyway, was a lot better in the second half, as was Terrell Thomas. The fullbacks were a lot better in that second half, particularly Watson, because he actually imposed himself on the game in a more attacking presence. And it was actually him who was involved in not just our second goal, but also our third goal. Slobodan Tedic had a really good opportunity just before then. Basically spun and shot on his right foot, and Sinisalo did really well to parry it over the bar. But we did eventually take the lead through another Charlton penalty. Tenno Watson, I said, was a lot more involved in the second half and was involved in our second and third goal. And he was certain he played a big role in the second one as he did end up winning the penalty. He got the ball from Tedic after he got run through the back of um, <laughs> just on the edge of the box. Watson, Watson ran through on the right hand side, uh, put a ball into the box, looking for an EK at the back post. The defender manages to head it away. And Watson comes sprinting into the box, looking to grab the ball, get hold of the ball for the second ball. And the player wipes him out. He goes flying. Ref gives a penalty. And Anike steps up to take it, which I thought was quite interesting. I would have thought Arthur May would have taken it as he is, well, traditionally a designated taker. But Anike stepped up to take it and, of course, did miss it. Sinisalo guessed the right way. He went to the keeper's bottom right. Sinisalo saved it off onto the post, but May comes sprinting out, reacts quickest, and is there to tap in the rebound. I felt really bad for Anike last night. I felt that his performance did deserve a goal. It, you could tell that after um, May scored, you could tell Anike was gutted that he didn't find the back of the net. He has made a really good impact since coming back to the side and coming in injured, and it's really, really good for him. So I hope that he can uh, keep himself fit. But like I said, he deserved a goal last night, and I did feel really, really bad. But nevertheless, Alfie May did put the ball into the back of the net. He reacted fast. He's got it in the back of the net for two. One. And then not long after that, I spoke about it earlier, the sending off, Will Ameson getting a straight red card for a challenge on Alfie May. And I'm going to, I may as well just say it right now, it is no way a red card. Never in a million years is that a red card. I think when I first watched it or the initial uh, viewing of it, um, it did look, you know, studs up. He, he catches the player, sends May flying. And I think in that, in that sense, it is a dangerous challenge. But when you look at the uh, the replays, Ameson actually has the ball at his feet and he goes to play a pass out and he does actually get the ball first. He passes the ball out. He sort of like slips as he passes and as he's sort of kicked the ball and followed through, he does catch May. If anything, to be honest with you, I think Alfie May kicks Ameson. To be honest with you, I think he kicks him. But Ameson wins the ball. He does win the ball and then the follow through catches him. Straight red card. It's not a red card. It probably would even be a harsh yellow, to be honest with you, even if you do give him a yellow card for that. But yeah, I think after that, it just really challenged the balance of play. I think after that sending off, it was very clear, in my opinion anyway, who was going to end up winning that game. Um, it certainly changed the game completely. You know, Exeter just really, just didn't really react well after that sending off. And as I said, it was a very unjust red card. Definitely was not a red card. After that, we made our first substitution. Miles Lieburn came on in place of Anike. As I said, Anike really gutted that he didn't get a goal, but... With Lieburn coming on, fresh pair of legs, once again, a more physical, towering presence up front. I thought it was very clear that he was going to impose himself or look to impose himself on the game. And he certainly did that, and it, as it was Lieburn who did get the third goal. Once again, coming through Tenai Watson, a fantastic ball uh, down the right-hand side to play in Louis Watson. Watson controls it so well, an excellent first touch. And then I think the Exeter defender gets a foot onto it, and it comes to Lieburn on the edge of the box. He takes a shot blast it into the back of the net. A fantastic finish from Lieber and his second of the season now. And yeah, after that point, well, we put the game out of sight at that point. Made more substitutions. Fraser come on for Watson. I think it was Louis Watson. Yeah, it was Louis Watson. Louis Watson, as I said, absolutely outstanding yesterday. Absolutely brilliant. Imposed himself in the midfield as with Dobson. You know, his vision was excellent. His technical ability was outstanding. Very, very good performance from him. Dobson, as I said, again, was brilliant. You know, his vision for passing was superb. Not as good as it was in the second half as it was in the first half, but nevertheless was a very typical Dobson 
Watson performance. Nathan Asimway came on for Tenai Watson. As I said, Watson was shocking inside the first half, but in the second half, he got a lot better, was involved in two of our goals. And yeah, I thought he was definitely a lot better inside the second half. And then Tyrese Campbell came on for Slobodan Tedic. Tedic, of course, was on a yellow card and did take a bit of a beating last night. I think he took... Um, he took a ball to the stomach. He was winded at one point inside the first half and then obviously got uh, shot through the back off in, inside the second half, which then led to our uh, penalty uh, not long after that. But yeah, Tedic again had another good game, another good impactful match on the right-hand side. And what is a very unnatural position to Tedic? You know, he's usually a striker, but he's being played in the wide areas and all the games he has played in. I thought he's played that role really, really well. And Tyrese Campbell came on and not long after those substitutions, we killed the game off completely with our fourth goal of the night. And it was Alfie May getting a brace. Corey Blackett-Taylor getting the ball over on the left-hand side from an Alfie May ball. You know, May playing the ball out to him uh, pretty close to the um, pretty close to the halfway line, and Blackett Taylor gets hold of the ball, skins past his man, goes past the goalkeeper, unselfishly pulls it back across the face of goal, looking for Leeburn, and about three defenders are charging back. One of them gets a foot hold of it, but there is Alfie May sprinting from the edge from um, the halfway line to get into the box, and he's there to tidy it up, smash it into the roof of the net for four one on his left foot. Two goals for him on the night, completely out of sight now, and I think beyond that point, it could very very easily have been a cricket score. You know, we could easily have scored another one. There was another opportunity where I think um, I think it was May who put a ball across the face of goal again and uh, Lieburn nearly got hold of it or May as well. You know, both of them nearly got hold of the ball uh, in one occasion to make it uh, to make it 5-1. But like I said, it could very easily have been a cricket score. And I think the sending off had a massive part to play in that. I would not be surprised whatsoever if Ameson's red card is to be rescinded because, as I said, it wasn't a red card whatsoever. But I think after that, like I said, it was very clear who was going to win the game beyond that point. Exeter didn't react very well and we just kept on attacking. I really like the fact that Appleton, you know, usually with Charlton sides, you know, when we're 2-1 up and we're there down to 10 men and we're seemingly in control of the game, you do tend to see sides, you know, kind of sit back and just, you know, like, yeah, pass the ball around the back. But we looked to kill the game off. We looked to attack. We got two more goals. And then once we had that security... That was when we started to, you know, play the ball out the back, you know, pass it around the midfield and sort of take the piss, really. You know, it was clear who was going to be the side that was going to come away with the win. And the full-time whistle blew. Charlton Athletic 4, Exeter City 1. Very, very good night overall. Another victory against Exeter. That's six in a row now against Exeter. They must absolutely hate playing us um, at the Valley or just in general really hate playing against us. We got six points off them last season. But yeah... Very, very good, and certainly a run is building now. Five unbeaten in the league now, still unbeaten under Michael Appleton with two wins and two draws. Very good performance last night. As I said, absolutely brilliant. The attack, certainly different with the way we set it up, you know, with the 4-2-3-1, but it worked really, really well. Appleton said it, we got it really right last night. You know, and Ike and Tedic getting a deserved start, played really well. Alfie May in that deep role, playing as the number 10, was excellent, and I want to see a lot more of that. Blackett Taylor was outstanding, a lot more threatening. He got a lot more service than he did uh, on Saturday, and certainly proved that with his performance last night. Watson and Dobson, Louis Watson that is, was absolutely fantastic. The fullbacks were the weakness for me, especially in the first half of the defence in general. That is the one thing that we do need to look at. The vulnerability of the defence is still very present and we do need to work on that. We seriously do. You know, even though Appleton has come in and a head coach, you know, a proper coach has come in, the defensive frailties and vulnerabilities are still there. So we do need to work on that quite desperately. We need to keep this momentum going now. As I said, five unbeaten. We need to find a little bit more consistency though. You know, as I said, a nil-nil draw with Shrewsbury, a, a terrible performance and then a 4-1 win over Exeter we need to keep the momentum going and need to get some consistency going against the Blackpool side who can be deadly when they want to be you know they are on paper a very decent side and one of the best in this league obviously got beat last night by a good derby side but they are still going to present a challenge that is it for this match reaction guys I hope you guys did enjoy it if you did can you possibly leave a like subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video what do you guys think of the game let me know in the comments below this has been Tyler Rowlinson have a nice day and I'll see you all for that match reaction on Saturday against Blackpool. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.